Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be continuing the development of the index post layout component. So we're going to be using the globally scoped pagination variable to access pagination data related to images. All right, so to do this, we're going to go to the index post images post right here. Let me just zoom in on the page. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be adding the post images to the site. So we're gonna be adding an examples directory, which is gonna be used to hold all of our images. And we're gonna add an example post one directory, an example post two directory, and then an example post three directory. So we'll be adding one directory for each of our example posts that we have. And then inside of those directories, we'll be adding each image for each post. And then we're gonna take a look at the post images. So we're gonna look at how to add the image and all to the post files. So how to add the custom variables to the YAML front matter blocks for each example page. And then we're gonna look at how to add the image and alt to the globally scoped page variable. So how ViewPress handles this for us. We're gonna take a look at that. And then we're gonna look at how to display the images using the index post layout component. And then we're gonna take a look at the entry page HTML and the page to HTML after we've added the images. All right, so like I mentioned, this is what we're gonna be doing. So in this tutorial, we're going to continue the development of the index post layout component by using the globally scoped pagination variable to access pagination data related to images. So to display the data on the pagination pages, we'll be updating the index post layout components template tag like we did in the previous tutorial. And you wanna make sure that you start your local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. So over here, I have the site running on localhost port 8080, and I have it running right down here in this terminal. All right, so you wanna make sure that you add each block of code below one at a time to your project, and then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for. And then you can view all of the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 18 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come right here to this link to get all of the code for this tutorial. And then now let's move on to adding the post images. So before we can access the pagination data related to images, we need to first add the images that will be displaying in the list of post pages. So we're going to be adding three post images to the blog, one for each post. And each post image is gonna have a width of 155 pixels and a height of 185 pixels. And then using the same width and height for the post images is gonna make the list of post pages look consistent because all of the images are gonna have the same width and heights. Now you can download all the images below from your browser. And they're also available in the tutorial 18 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come here to the tutorial 18 branch and you can get all of the images from here, as well as being able to download them from your browser. Now these images were created using Canva and this site offers a lot of features for free, but some features and images require payment if your free trials expired. So a good alternative to Canva is GIMP. And we talked about these tools in a previous tutorial, but here they are again. So these are some other useful image tools that you can use for editing your images. And then it's also important to reduce the file sizes of your images by using compression. And this is gonna help optimize your site's bundle size, save bandwidth, and decrease the loading time for your images. So Canva and GIMP and some of the other image tools up here mentioned above offer the ability to compress your images. And then here are some other useful online tools for image compression. All right, so now let's get into adding an examples directory. So let's start by creating an examples directory inside of the images directory and the examples directory is gonna be used to store the post images for each example post. All right, so let me come over here, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to close out that terminal, and then I'm gonna open up this terminal right here, and let me just get out of this, and I'm just gonna go back to the CodeMonkeys block tutorials right here. So. You can see right here that we are on the tutorial 18 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to CD 
into the docs directory. So if we list out here, you can see we have our docs directory. So we're going to CD into that, and then we're going to CD into the dot view press, and then we're going to go inside of the public directory, and then inside of the images directory. Now, if I list out the contents of this right here, you'll see that I already have the examples directory right there. Now, if you wanted to make the directory, you can just do mkdir and then type out examples, and this will create the examples directory inside of the images directory. And the directory structure for your site should now look something like this. The docs directory, dot view press, public directory, your images. We have that CoMonkeys logos directory from a previous tutorial. And then you're going to have your examples directory right there. All right, so that's what the directory structure is going to look like after adding that examples directory. And now for the example post one. So after adding that examples directory, we're now ready to add the post images for each example post. And we'll be creating a directory for each example post inside of the examples directory. And then we'll add the post images to the directories of each example post. All right, so we're going to start with the first example post by adding the example post one directory inside of the examples directory. So if we CD into the examples directory right here. And let me just clear out the screen. And then if I list out here, you can see I already have all of the example post directories. Now, if you wanted to make them, you could do mkdir and then example post one, and this will create the example post one directory for you inside of the examples directory. So that's what the directory structure is going to look like. You have your examples directory and then the example post one directory. Now, if I CD into that example post one directory, and then if I list out the contents, you'll see that I have the example post one image right here. All right, so you're going to want to add that image to your site by either downloading it right here, which you could do right here, or you could get it from the tutorial 18 branch from the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository, and then you're going to add it inside of that example post one directory. All right, so now for the example post two. So for the exam for the second example post, we'll be adding an example post two directory. So if we come over here and let me just CD out. And then we'll list out here. You can see I already have that example post two directory. So we can CD into that. Now, if you wanted to make it, you could just do mkdir example post two, and then that would then create the directory. And then inside of here is where we're going to be adding that example post two image. So you can see here, I already have the image. And this is what your directory structure is going to look like. You're going to have that examples directory, the example post one directory, the example post two directory, and then you'll have the image for the example post two. And then again, you can download it right here from the browser or get it from the repository. All right. So, and then let's look at the example post three. So again, we have the example post three directory. So for the third example post, you're going to want to create this in here. You could do mkdir. Um, oh, let me go back up here. So you can do mkdir example post three, and this will create the example post three directory for you inside of the examples directory. And then if we CD inside of there, you can see that after I list out the contents, you can see that I already have the example post three image. And again, you can get it by downloading it from the browser right here or by going to the repo. So the directory structure for your site should look like this. You have your examples directory, the example post one, example post two directories, and then you have your example post three directory, which is going to have that example post three image inside of it. All right. So now let's get on to the post images. So let me just clear this and we'll close out of that. And now for the post images. So after adding the post images to the blog, we now need to add a way to access each image in the index post layout component, which we'll accomplish by adding a custom variable image to the YAML front matter blocks of each post file. And the value of the image custom variable will be the path to the image in the project. So we're also going to add another custom variable of alt to the YAML front matter block of each post file and the value of the alt custom variable will be a description of the image. All right, so if you have any questions or you want to learn more about YAML front matter blocks in ViewPress, then you can check out these resources. So we talked about it in a previous post right here. And then you also have the documentation that you can go to right here for front matter and then the glossary right here, which describes the front matter. All right, so let's get into adding the image and alt to the post files. 
So this is what the post files are going to look like after we add the image and all custom variables to them. So if we come over here and if I open up the example post one, I'm just going to copy in this right here and we'll just paste this over here. So what we have here is we have our image custom variable right there. And then we have the value is going to be that examples directory that we just made. And then the example post one directory. And then inside of there is where we're going to have that example post one image. And then we're going to have our alt custom variable. And then we're going to give that a value of example post one post picture. So this is going to be the value for that alt. So this is going to be the description of our image, the text description of our image. And we'll save this. And then if we open up the example post two, and again, I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to copy in this. And then what we'll do is we will paste this in. So here again, we have our image custom variable. We're going inside of that examples directory and then we're going to the example post two directory that we made. And then we're going to have the example post two image that we added and then the alt custom variable is going to have a value of example post to post picture right there. All right. So we'll save this file and then we'll go to the example post three. And what we're going to do here is we're going to copy this again. And there you go. So we have our image custom variable again, examples directory, example post three directory that we made, and then the example post three image. So that's going to be the path to it right there. And then we have our alt custom variable with example post three post picture as the value for that. All right. So that is what we're going to be adding to the YAML front matter block for each of our example post pages. All right. So now let's get into adding the image and alt to the globally scoped page variable. So as mentioned in the previous tutorial, when ViewPress encounters a YAML front matter block in a markdown file, it's going to automatically add each variable as a property to the globally scoped page .front matter variable. So this is what ViewPress does by default. So we have our markdown file right here. Each of our example pages is in a markdown file and then we have our YAML front matter block. So what ViewPress is going to do is it's going to look at each custom variable inside of here and it's going to add it to that globally scoped page .front matter variable for us. All right. And then since the page objects in the pagination.pages property are the same as the page as the globally scoped page variables used by the post pages, we will now have a front matter dot image property and a front matter dot alt property that we can access in the index post layout component. All right. So this is how we're going to be able to access these values that we set for each one of our example posts. All right. So now let's get into displaying the images. So let me open up the index post layout component right here. So now that we can access the values of the image and all custom variables in the pagination.pages property, we're ready to render the images on the pagination pages. All right, so you can see over here that we're again, we're just looping over the pagination.pages property right here. And then each time we loop through, we're going to get the pagination data for each post in our list of pagination pages mm -hmm. and now what we're going to do here is we're going to display the images using the image tag, which we'll place in a div tag underneath the parent div tag of the P tag. So right here we have the P tag right here, and then this is the parent div tag of the P tag right here. So we're going to create a div tag right down here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to close that out. And then inside of this div tag is where we're going to add our image tag. All right, so this is where we're going to be adding our image tag in the index post layout component. And the image tag allows us to embed an image into the page and we'll be using the source and alt attributes provided by the image tag. So the source attribute is required and it contains the path to the image you want to display, which in our case are the post images we created earlier. All right, and the alt attribute is optional and consists of a text description of the image, which is useful for accessibility because screen readers will be able to read the description to the users. And this allows the users to gain an understanding of what the image is. And the description is also displayed on the page if the image is unable to be loaded. So you can come here to learn more about website accessibility if you are interested. Now, if you want to learn more about the image tag, then you can check out this resource right here, and this will go into more detail about the image tag if you're interested. 
All right, so now we can access the image and alt properties on each page object in our loop by using the post.frontmatter.image and post.frontmatter.alt respectively. So the index post.view file is going to look like this after we add the code for it. So if you come down here, and I'm just going to copy in this code right here for our image tag. So let me just copy this, and I will come over here. I'll paste this in. Let me format the file and then we'll save it. So what we're doing here is here we're binding the source and alt attributes by placing this colon right here before them, which is shorthand for vbind. And this allows us to bind the JavaScript expressions to the HTML attributes. Mm -hmm. So you can see over here that we have our JavaScript expressions right here. And what we're doing here is with this colon right here is we're binding these JavaScript expressions to our HTML attributes. All right, so this is what lets us use these variables here for the values for the source and the alt. So as we're looping through, we can use the variables so we can use the, the specific values for each post, each example post in our list here. All right, so now you also notice that the that we have this slash images slash was added to the beginning of the path to the post images, which we need to add since they're all located in the images directory. So if you remember, we created that examples directory inside of the images directory, and we only gave the path to the images in the front matter. So if you come over here, you can see that the path that we set was this examples right here. So that's the path that it's gonna be looking at. So what we need to do is we need to add the slash images slash to the beginning of the path. So then it's going to, so then ViewPress can find the files. Now we don't need to include the dot ViewPress slash public in the path to the post images though, because whenever you reference assets stored in the public directory, that's going to get all added automatically for us. And then right here, you can see that we're using the post.frontmatter.image variable right here. So we're accessing so we have our post right in here, which we're looping over the pagination.pages property. Then we have that front matter object right there. And then we're gonna have that image property, which will then have the rest of the path to the image in the site. And then right here, we have our alt attribute right here. And you can see that we have our post right here. So this individual post in our pagination.pages property. And then we have that front matter object and then we have the alt attribute right there, and that's gonna bring in that text description that we set for the custom variable in each example page in each one of those markdown files. This is gonna be that value right there. And you also notice right here that we have an alternative value. So we also added an alternative value for the post image alt, for the post image alt attribute in case the alt custom variable isn't present in the front matter of a post. So in case that we forgot to add the alt image or the, the alt custom variable in a particular post, then we're gonna have this fallback right here. And this is done by using a logical or operator. So that's this right here. And here we're using the post.frontmatter.alt or the post picture. So this means if the alt property evaluates to a falsy value, so here's a linked to falsy value. So for example, if it was undefined, if we forgot to add it for some reason, then this will display the post picture text instead. So it's gonna display this text instead. All right, so if you have any questions or you want to learn more about vbind or the logical or operator, then you can check out these resources. So we have the vbind documentation right here. Then we have using vbind in view. So there's a blog post right here about that. And then we have this link for the logical or operator in JavaScript. All right, so now if we take a look at, if we go to our localhost port 8080, and if we go to the all post right here, you can see that we have our example posts right here, our images right here. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. So you can see that we have our example one image right here, our example two image. And then if we go to the second page, you can see that we have our example three image right there. All right, so now let's get into the entry page HTML. So after updating the index post.view file, 
With the code above, if you navigate to the entry page like we just did, you should now see the images being displayed with some styling provided by the default theme. And the HTML for the body tag for the entry page is now going to look something like this. So inside of our body tag, if you went inside of there, then you could see that we'd have our div tag that we created below the parent div tag of that P tag right there. And then we have our image tag, which then has the source and the alt attribute for the example post one image. And then we have it again down here for the example post two image. So if you came over here and if you inspected the page and if we went over here, go inside the body, the div tag with an ID of app, the global layout, theme default content, and then you can see we have our H1 up there and then we have this div tag and then we have this div tag right here and then this is gonna be that P tag. So right here underneath that div tag is our image. So we have our div tag that we added right there. And this is our image for the example post one. And then if you come down here, you can see a similar thing for our example post two. So we have our P tag and then we have that div tag that wraps it. And then right here we have that div tag that we created with our image for the example post two right there. All right, so that's what the HTML is gonna look like for the entry page. Now, if you come over here to the page two, so if you navigate to the second page, you should now see the image being displayed like we saw with some styling, which is again provided by the default theme. So if we come back over here to the page two, and if you inspected the page, and you can see right here, this is our page two HTML. We have that P tag with that div tag that wraps it right under there. We have that div tag, and then we have our image tag right there with the source and all attributes that we set for the example post three image. So you inspected the page, you went to the body, the div tag with an ID of app, global layout, the theme default content, and then we have our H1 tag up there, and then we have our div tag for our example post three, and then we have our P tag right there, that div tag that wraps that, and then right underneath there, we have our div tag that we added, and then our image for the example post three. All right, so this is what the HTML is gonna look like for the second page. All right, so in this video, we went over how to add the post images for each example post. So we added that examples directory inside of the images directory. And then inside of the examples directory, we added directories for each example post. And then inside of those directories, we then added our images. All right, and then again, you can get the images right here by downloading them, or you can get them from the repository. And then we also looked at the post images. So we looked at how to add the image and alt to the post file. So we looked at how to add the image and alt custom variables. And we went over the values that we assigned to them. And then we went over how ViewPress adds the image and alt custom variables in those YAML front matter blocks, how it adds it to the globally scoped page variable, which we can then access in our pagination.pages property. And then we went over how to display the images in the index post layout component. All right, and then we took a look at the entry page HTML and then the page two HTML, okay? So in the next tutorial, we're going to be continuing the development of the index post layout component by beginning the process of adding the pagination buttons to the pagination pages. So if you come here and if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see these pagination buttons down here. So we're gonna be going over how to add these pagination buttons in the next tutorial, all right? So we'll see you in the next video.